I'm Alicia. I'm Anna. I'm Xander. And we are playing Incapacitate, Elevate, Illuminate, a game that I made recently. And I'm eager to show it off to you guys. This is a game which is both a shooter and a diner dash sort of game in which you are protecting protesters. It's based on a lot of my feelings about protests nowadays. Uh, this is a, not an especially politically charged game, but there are politics elements to it, so Fair warning to you. These are the controls. Arrow keys to move, C to incapacitate, X to elevate, P to pause, F4 to four screen, etc. Just the standard controls that you'd expect. And we will begin with the initial cutscene. You will learn how to deliver flyers. Basically what I want to tell right now is tell the player how to play the game without actually saying press C to do this, press X to do this, so you press one button to deliver the flyers and you press one button to deliver the donuts. <laughs> Only lightly lacerating the fourth wall. You know, fourth walls are there to be lacerated in some ways. In any case, you're moving around here like now and this is where the actual game begins. So, as soon as the music turns up, this is the actual shooting element. And eating a donut is pretty much exactly like, you know, eliminating an enemy, which we're going to show you now. First thing we've done now is incapacitated the enemy. Then we elevate it, and it becomes illuminated. And now we go into the game proper. So in this case what we're doing is we are trying to finish this wave of enemies, or as I call them, not yet friends. They are in fact friends once you teach them that they don't have to keep their evil ways, that they can expand their minds and become more things. I also want to mention that all the enemy graphics in this game are done by the fantastic Sangria, and that all the music in this game is done by the very talented Electric Heat. One of the things I wanted to note was that uh, I also uh, helped with this game. I uh, helped uh, call the assurance on it. And uh, it brings me to one of the things. So you see this uh, laser right now. Uh, you can actually charge this laser in the initial build of it just by holding one of the enemies for a very, very long time. Uh, we fixed that, but uh, it was kind of funny just that uh, you just shoot one person, hold them, and then uh, you elevate them until suddenly space lasers. We had quite a, quite a few little bugs that we had to go through when making this game, but you know, that's part of game development. I will explain some other parts of game development later, but in the meantime, this level right here is introducing the plane enemies. Plane enemies are essentially invulnerable from the front, that's why they got little lasers, they got the little shield up front. And they are vulnerable when they move up, though. And they only move at right angles, so you have to shoot them when they're moving up or down. Now, when I was playing this, uh, I drew enough of a conclusion to conclude that do things meter goes up, but I didn't quite follow the exact mechanics of it. Could you explain the meter in the upper right of it? Okay, the multiplier goes up the longer that you have illuminated enemies on the screen. The bar itself goes up the more enemies you have on the screen, the more illuminated enemies you have on the screen. You can also keep the illuminated enemies on the screen longer by shooting them. Yes, if you shoot them multiple times while they're incapacitated, they will bounce around a few times more. Oh. And now we've reached the first boss, which I call Switcheroo. For reasons that you'll see in a bit. So what we're doing here is we're shooting the little switch that's underneath the boss, at which point we illuminate the switch, 
elevate it, and the boss starts shooting out regular enemies instead of the shielded ones like we had before. And the shielded ones are back, so we need to repeat the process. Just illuminate that. And the boss has been switched, shooting regular enemies that hurt it when we bounce them. Now, of course, the boss will have no more part of this and has gotten rid of their switch. Fortunately, the enemies that they are now spawning will drop their shields every once in a while, so that you shoot the enemies while their shields are dropped, suddenly you're able to use them in order to destroy the boss. And we have our victory. But our player feels a little bad about themselves, because uh, as I'll explain at the end, this is a game honestly about being bipolar and wanting to help out with protests and stuff that's going on right now. And being bipolar, not being on your meds is, yeah, I'm. People around me who care about me very much are very glad that I'm on my meds right now. In any case, this is an introduction to the Diner Dash minigame. This is not actually playing the Diner Dash minigame, but this is a little cutscene that explains to you how to do it. There are a little box of placards down in the lower left-hand corner, and you use it to give to the people. And we can do it again. But one of the things we can do is that the controls are exactly the same as they are for the shooting segments. So what you're doing is you're using the C button in order to hand off uh, placards, and you're using the X button to grab on to protesters and move them into position. In any case, there is not much happening here except it gives the player the opportunity to play around with these protesters. It's not a particularly, you know, serious time if you want to completely break this at this point. You can move the protester down in front of the dialogue that's going on the bottom of the screen there. I really wish that Game Maker provided the opportunity in order to basically have outlines around text, which would make things a lot easier, but they don't. You can only make the monocolored text. So it's a pain. But I tried not to break the fourth ball here by moving friends in front of the text, but eh, you know. In any case, here is the next sequence. This is going to be the last shooting sequence in the game. I actually was going to have a third shooting sequence in the game. There comes to be a point in the game where you would have to make a decision. And based on that decision, you would get one of two different endings. And one of them would be a shooter, and one would be the one that we've included. I ditched the shooter one, even though it has really good ideas that I'll explain when we get there. But in any case, this is a much more varied shooting stage than before. There's mostly different enemies. These ones always face you wherever you are, and they move around in various paths on the screen. Here's these ones shoot up and down at you, so you have to be careful of them. There's more of those blinking shield enemies. And these are meteors. And a lot of these came from Sangria, just uh, they just had ideas, and I was just like, yes, do it! And they're like, okay, and we had a lot of fun with that. Now this level gets pretty difficult. The difficulty is definitely ranks up on this part of the level. Yeah, the uh, there's a pretty steep difficulty curve for this one, though. It, you can also technically beat the waves faster just because there's more density of enemies on the screen at any given point in time. So you can actually speed run it pretty well if you get, you know, in the groove. But uh, the uh, you still have the wall of bullets to deal with here, as you can see. The uh, complexity of some of these patterns has given me uh, Galaga flashbacks. Yeah, I planned out a lot of these waves, and then I thought about like how to put them together. I can actually play this pretty well. I just did the defeat there just to show you about how defeat works in this game. What 
one of the things that it did also illustrate, too, is that even though if you have the super beam, uh, those bullets can still hit you. Uh, it doesn't stop them. Yes. So uh, you still do have to be a little bit careful once you have it, but... Uh... Now, the super beam at the end has a certain number of enemies that you have to hit and turn into friends. Actually, if you don't fill up that beam, the bar that's at the top, as soon as you get the super beam, you'll have to do it all over again. The beam only completes if you've hit, I think it's like 12. Fortunately, there's so many on the screen that t hitting 12 is not a problem. That's why I kept it that low, but you know, I was thinking during development that maybe I could do a little more, maybe a little less, etc, etc, depending on level. We'll see those uh, turret laying enemies again in the, the pretty immediate future. I like the turret enemies a lot. They're very difficult to, to manage. You really have to be on top of them. If you don't get on top of them, they spawn all those little enemies <laughs> that shoot at you a lot more. Plus, side, you still get like uh, your wave finish faster if you do it that way and let them spawn a few, but uh, it's risky. And now we get the next boss. Now, you're going to be pretty old school if you get the joke here. This is Gyrus. <laughs> I'm sorry, it had to be done. So this boss has a couple tentacles and has those uh, spawner enemies on the top of it. Now, you notice that I immediately let that go, even though I'm not aiming at the eye. The reason for that is that all the little spawn shooters, they will hit you. You have to keep moving. <laughs> now, here's the next part. The gyrus has now come up with these two little control rods, has two little arms. And they actually control the movement of the spinners there on the screen. So you have to take out a number of the spinning objects in order to make them drop their shields. Then you can shoot them, eliminate them, and there we go. And now the enemy's shield has popped off their eye, so they are vulnerable at this point. Oh yeah, they also have a laser. One thing that's really cool is that my friend Rats actually has a program that lets you make this sound. So this sound is something that, uh, the laser shooting, is something that I came up with. We're just dicking around with this tool. It's pretty neat. It's a really good one. Yeah, I was really proud of that sound effect. There we go. This boss was going to be a little more complex. I had ideas that I was going to be doing. I was going to be having another wave, in fact, of puzzling that you could do, and I was just... I got kind of tired of it after a while, and so I was just like, this is enough. Hey, what's it doing there? Oh, that's right, you can illuminate this one. And off it goes. Goodbye, but... I. Unfortunately, as I said before, these represent bipolar mania. You're in a manic state when you're doing these shooting segments, and it kind of bites you in the ass. Manic states, they're good for creativity, but... They're not great for decision-making. No. So finally, our protagonist takes their meds, and they come to the protest. And so we have protesters on one side and the police on the other side. Police are attempting to arrest the protesters and the protesters are attempting to break through the police line. I explain each of the concepts that needed in this Diner Dash sort of game. And I take the player through them one by one. This initial level, the police took quite a nerf from what they originally were. Originally, you had to really get on them in order to keep those protesters from getting taken away, but I made it easier. Now, I explained before that I actually had an idea for a second final boss level, and that would be, you would be one of those little green not-yet-friends. The ship itself would get captured, and you would basically 
have to free it with your lasers, and then you would work with it. It would shoot down other enemies, and then you would illuminate them by moving around the screen. And, as I said, this took like four months to do, and I was just like, no, <laughs> we're done. I'll just do this ending. <laughs> the decision that the user would have to do is whether or not to take their pills. They don't take their pills, they get that ending, and they do take their pills, they get this one. One of the things I found with this one was that you could just take all of your protesters, put them in a line without the police in front of them, and give them signs, and eventually you'll, you'll, you'll get through the stage without actually having to do anything, technically. Exactly. The problem here is that it takes so goddamn long, because the, when you put them in a line, they give much less score to the bar that controls whether or not they move on to the next stage. So if you have a look, each of them has two bars. They've got the gray bar that's up top. When that fills up, that all gets dumped into the no bar that you see that's turning green right now. If the problem is that they don't fill up very fast, then you're just kind of sitting there waiting for them to go up. Fortunately, there's medics in this round that they increase the red health bar. And as I said, it's diner dash. You've got to be on the ball in order to get the now, Xander got a bug <laughs> uh, later uh, in, in this level where they got two medics. Yep, that made it a lot easier. <laughs> the game does support as many medics as you want. That bug is still in the game, by the way, so feel free to exploit it <laughs> if you can do it. Now we introduce the next thing, which is the block. They beat SWAT. So it's basically a game mechanic in which SWAT have showed up in one lane and you just put block in front of it. And that lane becomes a lot shorter. But at the same time, you also don't have to worry about uh, getting pushed off screen because block will push against the SWAT. But block aren't there. SWAT will just take them off screen and just get rid of them altogether. You won't be able to have those protesters anymore. And the final mechanic are flashbangs. So you are able to make a lot of decisions based on those bars that are on the screen. The bars that each of the protesters that fills up and lets them, you know, it contributes to their no, how much help they have, and whether or not they have a medic. Flashbangs take all that information away from you. Flashbangs don't actually hurt anybody, but as you'll see, they'll remove all that information. Right there, you see that the protesters, both of their red and their gray bars have disappeared, and whether or not they have a medic is gone. So you gotta remember. <laughs> Fortunately, they come back after a while. The spawns for the flashbangs are completely random, and so I have no idea when they're gonna come out. <laughs> Now, we hit the final level, and so you have to take everything you've learned and survive for a good two minutes or so. It is either not easy, or if you know what you're doing, it's still difficult. Now, what I want to do is I want to get all of the protesters in front of police, because otherwise they won't get any no-bar energy. Something that wasn't in your build, Xander, was the placards flashing when they become... Oh yeah. Yeah, you just sort of, originally you just sort of had to eyeball it, and eventually their placards would just disappear, and that would be that. Now, I'm showing you what happens when the SWAT push a player off screen. Yep, no more scoring for them. And they won't come back. I guess they're in a paddy wagon now. Yep.
And now you've got to make sure that all of the protesters, you know, have as much energy as they can get because otherwise they'll be arrested. You see on the screen that um, the little arrested icon right there. But you've got to just keep throwing protesters at it because that's, that's how this works, apparently. <laughs> and we did it! And no. no! And that's the end of the game. And we have a final little cutscene. And then we'll have the credits. We are ready to step out. Hand them a sign. Can't promise what I'll say. Just say it loud. And our motif, I can do that. So that was Incapacitate, Elevate, Illuminate, or IEI. I originally wanted it to be III, but uh, <laughs> couldn't think of a good word to have as the second one. I did this in Game Maker 1.4, not Game Maker 2 which is currently out right now. And you're able to play around with the ship while it happens, and as you'll see, you can actually do something in these credits. So here are the names of all the ships. We start out with the humble Bisbee, and as you can tell, these, most of these are named after Grace Harrier enemies. Fighter and the Satellite are both named by Sangria. Thomas is one that I named. And there's the Makus. The Meteor Drome. And this one is not named after anything in Space Harrier. This is the Shags. Are you ready for the Shags? I am ready for the Shags and for the Shags spawn. Thanks to Xander and Rick for playtesting. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Thank you for loving me into your house and uh, showing you off this game, Juan. But of course. Well, thank you for having me uh, playtest this and make this a little bit better for folks. I hope you enjoy it. It is free on itch.io. There is a link below that you can pick it up at. And as one final thing you can do is that as soon as you play the game, you don't actually have to beat anything. You just need to start the game and then hit escape and go back to the credits and you'll get yourself a level skip. And so you can skip any of the levels that are causing you problems. And just go to whatever you want to go to. This was the thing that Rick recommended. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. And we will see you soon. <laughs>